Hi, Room 15. It is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. So we are going to be doing more area explorations with pattern blocks. Our learning targets are we can create a composite shape by composing two-dimensional shapes. That word composing right here means to create or put together. So you're going to be putting together two-dimensional shapes and compose another shape. We can recognize and draw shapes having specified attributes, and we can identify triangles, quadrilaterals, and hexagons. So do you remember what it means to measure the area of a shape? We just learned this yesterday. So if you don't remember, we're gonna review. Area is when you measure the space inside a shape. So if you take a look at the rectangles in the picture, they are all rectangles, but each different rectangle is a different size. So in order to measure each rectangle, we use squares. So the amount of squares in each rectangle is what we call the area. So the pink rectangle has 20 squares inside, so the area of that pink rectangle is 20. Or the purple rectangle is, has 42 squares inside, so the area of that rectangle is 42. So now we're gonna use triangles, compasses, trapezoids, and hexagons to help us find the area of different shapes. So let's start with triangles to measure the area of this hexagon. So now we're gonna count each triangle as one unit. So it, if we composed our triangles into a hexagon, we would need six triangles. So if each triangle is one unit, the total area of the hexagon is one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, which equals six units. So now we're gonna use rhombuses and trapezoids to measure the area of shapes. So first let's start with our rhombuses. We're gonna measure rhombuses using the same shape, which is a hexagon. Okay, so we are going to count each rhombus as one unit. Yesterday, we were counting a rhombus as two units. Today, we are using the rhombus to count as one unit. So it takes three rhombuses to compose a hexagon. So each rhombus is worth one. So that if we're using rhombuses, the total area of the hexagon is one plus one plus one, which equals three that should say three not six okay so now let's use trapezoids to measure the area of the hexagon so we're still using a hexagon as you notice each time we are composing a hexagon but we're using different shapes so now we're going to count the trapezoid as one unit yesterday we were counting the trapezoid as three units because we use triangles but now we're counting it as one so for composing a hexagon with trapezoids, we need two trapezoids. So the total area of each trapezoid is one unit. The total area of the hexagon is one plus one, which equals two units. So what do you notice about the total unit of the hexagons when we measured with different shapes? So if we use triangles, the total unit, the total area was six units. If we used rhombuses, the total area was three units. And then if we used trapezoids, the total area is two units. So what do you notice about the total area of measurement, but also the type of shape we used? So if you notice, Okay, we're all, all of these shapes are the same shape. They're all hexagons. But because we use different shapes and the shapes are each a different size, the smaller the shape, the more it takes to create the hexagon. Just like when we would measure in inches and feet. Okay, think of, a, a, of what we learned. If we measured the same thing in inches, it would take more inches because inches are smaller. That's the same as the triangles. Since the triangles are smaller, it takes more of them to create a hexagon, okay? And then the rhombuses are a little bit bigger, so it takes less of them to create the hexagon. So that would sort of be like feet, okay? Feet, it takes less feet to measure something than inches. And then 
look at the trapezoids. The trapezoid is the largest shape out of the three, so it takes even less. And that would be the same as like using yards, okay? So if we measured something, inches would be like triangles, feet is sort of like the rhombuses, and then yards is like the trapezoids, okay? So now we are going to take a look at shapes, okay? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to compose this star using triangles, okay? So if each triangle equals one unit of area, what's the area of the star? So it's the same shape. We're going to first use triangles to um, compose the star, and then we're going to measure the area inside using triangles, and then we're going to use rhombuses, okay? So if we cover the star in triangles, it would look like this, okay? Now, if we count each triangle as one, so I'm going to grab my pencil tool here, and each is one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, it would take 12 triangles to measure the area of the star. But then now we're going to use rhombuses, okay? So I've already covered up the rhombuses. This time I'm going to use black. So each rhombus is worth one. So I'm going to write one, two, three, four, five, six. So remember, if we use triangles, it was 12. If we use rhombuses, it is six. So remember, what do you notice about when we use triangles and rhombuses? So think about that. So if you're thinking that because triangles are smaller, the measurement is larger because it takes more to cover up the star, right? But then if we use rhombuses, they are larger, so it takes less, which means the total area is smaller, or um, it takes less, so it's fewer, okay? So now let's look at the shape at the bottom. This is a caterpillar. Oh, let me go back to the beginning. So this is a caterpillar. So we're gonna do the same thing, okay? And if you notice, the caterpillar is made up of three hexagons. So if we're gonna use triangles, it looks like this. And once again, we're going to count the triangles and we're going to count them as one unit. So this is one, oopsies. Let me click on the pencil. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to make this faster. We're going to use our math strategies. If this is six and then this is six and then this is six. Remember, this is kind of like repeated addition. You're adding the same number over and over again. So it's six plus six plus six which equals six plus six is 12, 12 plus six is 18. So if we measured the caterpillar in triangles, it would be 18. Now, even before we start measuring in rhombuses, I want you to think about what's gonna happen to the total measurement. Remember, rhombuses are larger than triangles, so it's gonna take less of them. So what's gonna happen to the total? Think about that first. Okay, so if you think well, actually, let's find out. Okay, so here is what it looks like if we use rhombuses on the caterpillar. And then I'm going to add them as one. Oops, let me change that to black. So this is one, two, three. So let's use our math strategies. This is three, and then this would be three plus three. And three plus three is six, plus three is nine. And if you remember, this was 18. So if you notice, this is exactly half, okay? And it got smaller because the rhombuses are larger, okay? So that's what you're working on today. I want you to notice that the smaller the shape that you're using to measure, the higher the measurement. But the larger the shape, like the um, trapezoids and rhombuses, it takes fewer because the shapes are larger, and so it covers more space in the shape, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're going to go to Seesaw, and the activity, just give me a second, let it load. 
Okay, so the activity is called What's It Worth? Area Explorations with Pattern Blocks. Okay, so I'm still using a sample student. So let's look at the directions. So you're going to click the add response. You're going to click on the template, what's it worth? You're going to find the area of the big rhombus and the flower on pages two and three. Okay, you can drag the shapes in the big rhombus and the flower to help you. You want to use the pencil to write your answers. Then you click the T for the last question on each page to type what you observe. Then you're going to drag your text box next to the star shape. You should have a text box with your answer observation next to the star on each page. You need to complete pages two and three of what it's worth. Pages four and five are optional challenges, okay? And then if you need to um, use the shapes, you can use this website, which is just patterns, like just pattern blocks, okay? And you just drag them in here like this, all right? So you don't have to use that. So let's take a look. So here are the directions again. Find the area on pages two and three. Read the directions on each page. Pages four and five are optional pages if you want a challenge. So, um, so once again, you are going to measure the inside of the shape. That's finding the area. And each shape counts as one. And then you're going to drag the shapes over, okay? And then when you're done with them, you're going to have to put them back, okay? If you don't need to use the shapes, you can just use the pencil tool, okay? And then for each triangle, you're going to do one, okay? And then you need to erase that. Oops. You need to erase that because then if you're going to use the rhombuses. So remember, I'm in the eraser and I'm trying to grab the rhombus and I can't. So in order to grab it, remember, you need to be, you need to have this clicked the hand with the pointer finger, because that's showing you that you can move it. Okay, so you're gonna drag it, and then you can write in pencil. That's kind of hard to see, so you might wanna click like yellow, because you can see yellow on the dark blue, okay? Oops, I'm sorry. That is the wrong measurement. It should be one. Okay, so I'm gonna write one, one, and you're gonna keep doing that until you measure all the rhombuses. Okay, then you're gonna do the same thing with the trapezoid. So I wanna erase that. And then I need to have that clicked in order to move them. I'm gonna move them back. And then you're gonna use the trapezoid. So now look, I'm supposed to be using trapezoids, but if I put it like this, I need a triangle. That is not correct. So this is not where the trapezoid goes. You probably need to turn it. So if you need to turn it, remember, you want to click on it and see this little picture with the arrow. You need to turn it in the direction that you need, and then you can drag it, okay? So I'm going to do it again down here because this is the direction that you want it in in that corner like that. Okay, and then remember, each trap is always worth one. So you need to write the total area if you use um, the trapezoid, okay? Now at the bottom, you need to make an observation of your total areas, just like we did here, okay? How this was 18 and this was nine, what do you notice about, oops, nine, what do you notice about the total measurement? So you're gonna click the T box, and you're gonna write like, I observed that the total area, and write your observation. Now, if you write super big and your text box is super big and you need to, it doesn't fit when you drag it down here, what you need to do is you need to click on it and you see these little white dots on your text box, you need to, Click on one of the little white dots in the corner and you can make it smaller that way. And then you need to drag it down here next to that star, okay? You're gonna do the same exact thing on page three, which is a flower, okay? Same thing, you need to use the shapes to measure the area, write your total area on the blank lines with a pencil, and then use a text box 
and drag it over here by the star. Pages four and five are exactly the same, but if you want to challenge, okay, you have to figure out where the shapes go without the lines. And then the same thing with the flower, if you want to challenge yourself, okay? These are optional, meaning you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but you do have to do pages two and pages three. All right, my friends, good luck.